Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander. And I don't know about you, but I'm really tired. Exhausted, really. Tired of arguing politicians and pandemics and all kinds of different stuff that crowding our headspace. Tired of dealing with violence and arguments over who's going to do what where all around the world. Tired, y'all. Tired. We've all had our ups and downs the past few years with everything kind of turning upside down. We're all kind of tired, aren't we? But if these times have taught us anything at all, it's how to be resilient and adaptive when things are out of our control and happening everywhere. Inflation, um, job losses, increasing prices and in bills, increasing interest rates, uh, fighting politicians, uh, things going wrong outside of your control, the weather, hurricanes, all kinds of different things. But what I do know about all of these hard things, no matter how exhausted we are, hard times bring out our strength. It's not fun. Let's be honest. It's not fun. It's not easy. Not easy. I'm here with you. I hear you. I see you. I understand that the struggle is real. Every day we have a list longer than the time allowed to take care of the list. We probably have bills that are stacking up. And we wonder how they're going to be paid or how are we going to make ends meet or is this business actually going to work? Hard times create strength, and there are eventual benefits. Now, I'm not saying that we have to be happy and have sunshines and rainbows when we feel like our world is crashing in or closing in on us. But what we do learn about these hard times and things that come at us, things that are inside of our control or outside of our control, let's be real. Sometimes our wounds are self-inflicted. Sometimes we find ourselves in a position because we ourselves did nothing or did too much, or did the wrong things. And let's be even more real and more tough. Sometimes our problems, we created ourselves because of our own excuses, our own procrastination, or our own unwillingness to learn and adapt. But that's okay. It's okay now, because you're here right now listening to what can help you change that. It's not fun. It's not easy, but it's worth it. And there are benefits when we really consider where we're at and where we want to go. During our hard times, we learn that we are able to make quick and lasting changes to protect what's most important to us. Have y'all ever seen The Blind Side, the movie The Blind Side? Well, in this movie, there is a scene where... Um, Big Mike, they call him Big Mike, or Michael, Michael Orr, is um, protecting um, SJ in the truck. His natural protective instincts when he got into a car accident saved his life. Quick and lasting changes to protect what's most important to us. Have you ever grabbed a kid up before they fell onto their face? Have you ever slammed on the brakes to hit to prevent hitting a car in front of you? quick and lasting changes to protect what's most important. These are instinctual. But we can quickly learn to shift the way we do business if it's something that's more, most important to us, one of the things that's most important. If something threatens what's important to you, you will absolutely make quick and lasting changes to protect that thing. Otherwise, you need to question, is that thing the most important to you? One of the most important things. Hard times, difficult situations, things outside of our control quickly reveal to us what is important. Think about the pandemic. We click, quickly learned how to touch things in a different way. We quickly le learned how to put on masks to protect ourselves and our children and our family. We learned how to do things differently because life changed. We learned how to digitally recreate our life because we didn't have a choice. So when we put on that type of thinking 
and apply it to things that aren't forced at us, but things that we're supposed to make choices about, need to change our perspective. We need to learn to make quick and important changes in order to protect what matters most. But this carries a very long-term benefit. It causes us to evaluate. Evaluate what's most important in your life and begin to more closely match your actions with your priorities and your desires. When hard times come, eventually you're going to face a choice. Keep moving, keep pushing forward, keep looking towards your goals. Or asking yourself, is this still important to me? Do I still care about this? Do I still want this? Do I still need this? And y'all, the this can be anything you want it to be. We're talking about business here because mostly this is a business podcast. But honestly, when things come into your life, Think about it. Let's even go back to the hurricane situation, right? There's there's hurricanes. It's hurricane season. These are very devastating, scary, hard, life-changing things that happen. But in the midst of that coming, barreling down on you, you're looking and they're saying, evacuate, uh, protect yourself. What are the things that you grab? What are the things that you gravitate towards? What are the major things that you're going to protect in that situation? It's forcing you to look at what is most important. Now, some people be like, okay, well, we have to get all of the people, right? Ourselves, our humans, and our pets. Usually that's the first thing people think of when they're thinking, okay, we have to evacuate. We might never come back to a house that's standing. What do we want to take up with us? What is the most important things? And in those situations, emergency situations, it's the people we love, the pets we love included, important paperwork, things that would change your life forever. You can rebuild a house, but you can't replace a person or a pet, something that's living and breathing and moving. When we are forced to make budget cuts, we start looking at the most important things. You wouldn't skip the mortgage to pay the cable bill. (laughs) I mean, that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. You're not going to skimp on your groceries in order to keep your internet. These are survival things. But if you bump that up a notch, most of us are not in crisis. We will face crisis at some point in our lives and have to make decisions similar to these. But in average, average everyday living and in business and in life, we're not really in crisis. Now, if you are in crisis regularly in your business or your life, <laughs> let's talk because it should not ought to be that way. But there are times where we face really difficult decisions, whether it's inside or outside of our control. We face these things and there needs to be an evaluation of priorities in order to figure out. What's the most important thing to you? So when we're not in crisis, we still need to think about the changes and the adaptation that's going on to figure out what's most important to you and so that your actions can match your priorities. I remember like during the quarantine, many people were forced out of their jobs and had to survive another way. They had to adapt to a new normal and realize that they might have to start a business and make it on their own. What was the biggest challenge that you had to face during these times? Maybe you're still facing it. A lot of us are still facing these challenges. We're now in the new era, the post-pandemic era. The question, though, is what is the biggest change you're willing to make in order to protect what matters most to you, your health, your family, your lifestyle, your livelihood, your relationships. You've already made big changes. You have, all of us have permanent changes. You found out during these hard times and in these hard times right now, You found out what you were capable of more than you ever thought possible. You have done things in the past couple of years 
that you never expected to do, you never thought to do, never knew you knew how to do. And now those are permanent lasting changes. Did you know something? Once you learn something, you don't unlearn it. You can't, have you ever heard someone say, I can't unsee that, I can't unhear that. You're right, you can't. So it's really important to protect what's coming in to your eyes, to your ears, to your heart, to your soul. But once you learn something, that's something no one can take from you. You learned during these hard times that you were capable of more. You've done things you never thought were possible. My friend, that's powerful. We're going to sit in that for just a minute. Things you never thought you could accomplish or do. Things thought you thought you never would do. Never even dreamed of doing. You've had to do. We've had to adapt and change and grow and learn. And that is powerful because it fuels our fire for possibility. Now we know a little bit more about what's possible. Now, if you can adapt to these things, you can adapt to anything. You can accomplish more in your life and in your business than you ever thought possible. And these last few years should be proof of that. Look back. Take time to just think. What are the changes that you made? Some of them were welcomed. Some of them were very unwelcome. But you still did them. For what? For the sake of your family and your health and your livelihood and your life to protect what was most important to you. So you're stronger now. You can make changes. You can adapt. You can learn new skills. You can implement those skills to grow. Now, there's some things that stand in our way. There's definitely things that stand in our way. And there is one word, three letters that I'm going to talk to you about today that can change your perspective to give you that hope, that inspiration, that motivation, that fire. By adding this word to your negative thoughts, you can instantly shift your perspective on where you're going and where you want to be. I've got to ask you, do you have any negative self-talk? Do you ever struggle with thinking about quitting and thinking all these things are hard and all these things are out of my control and I can't go through this and I can't do this again or anymore or I'm just tired, we're tired. Do you ever have any of these conversations with yourself? Do you ever say, I'm not consistently making money. What's wrong with me? I don't have a clue how to find and list products. What if no one buys my stuff? I don't know what I'm doing. I'll never get this right. Do you ever talk to yourself like that? Do you ever have that internal dialogue? I certainly do. Certainly do. I'll be honest. This is full transparency here. Not all sunshines and rainbows. I struggle to try new things as well. I love to try new things, but only new things that I'm welcoming, right? Things that I've invited. But what about if you're forced to try new things? Like Amazon is always changing and they're always deciding that there's a new process, a new policy, a new something that we have to adapt to. And options are adapting or quitting. I don't love to adapt to change and honestly, I say this stuff to myself all the time. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm never going to get this right. I'm never going to figure this out. But this negative self-talk has to stop. It so easily and quietly weaves into our language, our minds, our conversations, leading us down a path of inaction, procrastination, and stress. Y'all, me too. Any of us, I'm raising my hand here, any of us put things off on a regular basis because you just don't feel like it, because you don't know how, because you're scared, because it's going to be hard, because it's going to take too long. Negative self-talk leads us down a path of inaction, procrastination, and stressful thinking, avoidance. When we allow this to creep into our minds, We will talk ourselves out of what really is going to make a difference in building our business. Now, I want to take some time to flip the script here. 
from this negative pattern with this one word. Now, I'm going to tell you this right away. I'm not talking about toxic positivity. Like, I don't know if you've heard these buzzwords and they're talking about toxic posit positivity where you're constantly thinking everything's going to be great and everything's going to be sunshines and rainbows and everything is going to be, you know, just every time someone says something negative, you say something positive. I'm not talking about a false sense of pretending that everything is going to be okay, but a true deep seated belief that change is possible. That's all I'm asking of you right now. To really consider that instead of exchanging the negative self-talk with a bunch of pretend fake smiles and negative or positivity, <laughs> I can't even say that right, y'all, uh, toxic positivity, but instead looking at it from a real world perspective. To not have to change the world, but to make one change at a time, starting with your thoughts and your words. I'm going to flip the script and give you a way to change this negative pattern so that you can see and accept, number one, that you have tons of power, tons of it. You have the power to make changes to your thinking, to your emotions, to your life, to your business. You're only one choice away from a completely different life. And I'm going to give you one word that can change all of this negative self-talk into something that's more of a real world perspective. Not necessarily a positive sunshines and rainbows perspective, but something that's more real and more right now. It's action-based. Change does not happen without action, period. For the people in the back, one more time, change doesn't happen without action. So what's this one word? This one word is going to give you permission to be exactly where you are right now with no judgments, with no woes, just permission to be exactly where you are. One word that will change your negative self-talk into a real perspective not just an emotional feeling way. One word that you would say to others, but often don't say to yourself. Think about when you're talking to a friend, a spouse, someone you care deeply about. When they say, what's wrong with me? I have no clue what I'm doing. What if this? What if that? I'm this. I'm that. I'll never get things right. I have no idea what I'm doing. This isn't going to work out for me. You have all the great things, but I don't. What would you say to that friend? How would you speak to them? Someone you deeply care about. Maybe it's one of your children. And they're like, oh, I failed again. I screwed up again. I'm doing this. I'm making mistakes. I'm never going to get this right. There's something wrong with me. Do you agree with them? It's like, yeah, you're right. You're screwed up. Good luck with that. Your life's going to be crappy. <laughs> no, y'all, we don't talk to people like that. If you do, there's therapy for that. <laughs> Honestly, we give them strength and encouragement. We say, yes, you're not there yet. That is your word, yet. It's really that simple, y'all, yet yet reminds you that there's purpose in the journey, that there's purpose in taking the steps and walking through the process, yet gives you permission to grow, learn, and continuously improve your life, your business, yourself, your thoughts. It doesn't have to be perfect. And don't expect yourself to arrive yet. You just started. You're in the beginning. Maybe you're in the middle. Maybe you're actually advanced and you feel like you should be there already and you're not there yet. It doesn't have to be perfect or big or shiny. It's a process. Yet reassures you that you will eventually reach those goals. That you're on a pace, that you're on a path. Let's try it out and see what it sounds like. I'm not making consistent money yet. I don't have a clue how to find and list products yet. 
I have no idea what I'm doing yet. Yet puts you in a position where you can actually do something about whatever it is that's got you stuck. Yet. You can actually do something about it. This word helps you flip that script. Reframing your ideas to positively address the challenge. That's it. You insert action statements to change the way you think and speak about your issues. This is what we're going to do. This is the practical how-to right here. We're just changing it. I want you to write the word yet on a sticky note or on an index card or on lipstick in your mirror. Wherever. Yet. And when you catch yourself saying, I can't, I won't, I'm not. not, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm not making enough money. I'm screwing up. I've made a lot of mistakes. I'm not making the money I want to make. This business isn't working yet. We're going to insert an action statement because it doesn't end with yet. That doesn't end there. That's just one acknowledgement. You're acknowledging first something that you want and don't have yet. You're going to insert a but after the end of that. Ready? I'm not consistently making money yet, but I am blank. You see how we just switched that? The first one was, I'm not making consistent money. What's wrong with me? How come I can't get this right? Everyone else is doing really good and I am just lagging behind. What is wrong with me? I'm not making consistent money. Now hear this. I am not consistently making money yet, but I am. Insert action right here but i am blank insert the action that you are willing to do to get closer to that thing if you want to make consistent money and you're not making consistent money what are you willing to do right now small step to get closer to that here's an example i am not making consistent money yet but i am researching new products to sell simple Action. I am not doing this yet, but I am doing this that will help me get closer to that. Okay? How about I don't have a clue how to find and list products yet, but I purchased the wholesale bundle system so I can learn the process. So I'm not asking you to change the problem, I'm not asking you to invalidate how you feel. Or what, what's actually true? I have no clue how to find and list products. Yet. Even if you have the wholesale bundle system and you've watched it 10 times. And you still feel like you have no clue. What is that action you can take to get a clue? You can purchase the wholesale bundle system and learn the process. You can re-watch certain sections. You can ask questions. You can try the process. Intending to fail so that you can learn. How about, I don't know what I'm doing. I have no idea what I'm doing here. But I am willing to try new things and ask questions. I am willing to be vulnerable to get to where I want to be. Yet. I don't know what I'm doing yet. I'm not very good at marketing. Yet. But I am willing to seek help and guidance and pay a coach or a mentor to help me with my marketing strategies. That's my own confession right there. Not very good at marketing. Um, Wanting to set up my marketing skills. Scared. How? I'm good at Amazon. I'm good at talking to you guys about Amazon and motivating and inspiring you to do better. But I'm not that great at marketing. And marketing is that thing for me right now that I worry about and I'm concerned about. And I wonder, I just can't get this right. Everyone else is killing it. I'm not. What am I doing wrong? I don't have a clue how to do marketing yet, but I am willing to purchase coaching coaching and courses and help to get it right. Yet. And but, right? I'm not there yet, but I am willing to blank. Write that down somewhere. Fill it in. Speak that to yourself. I already know you're speaking this to your children, your spouse, people around you. 
that's how you feel and want what would you want for them. But why not you? Why not now? Why not today? Yet. I'm not ready yet, but I am preparing to be ready, to get ready, to show up, to earn the income that I feel like I'm working for. Yet gives you permission to accept where you are and the decision to move in the right direction. And this doesn't mean you have to pretend there isn't problems. There's always problems. There's going to be problems, y'all. Problems, issues, concerns, things inside of your control and outside of your control. You're going to make mistakes. There, I said it. I said it again. You're going to make mistakes. But did you die? How many mistakes have you made in your life and you're living and breathing? I mean, some mistakes have more serious consequences. I mean, if you're learning how to use a chainsaw and you cut off your arm... That has a lot more consequences than listing a product that doesn't sell on Amazon, right? I mean, so let's be real. But we've all made mistakes in our lives and we didn't die. Instead, we learned. We learned what not to do at the very least. This just simply means that you're deciding to accept where you are and make a change towards where you want to go. Here's the question. Are you earning the income that you want to earn right now? If you're not there yet, there are actions you can take to change that right now. You can change the way that you do business. You can learn new skills. You can implement those skills in order to grow your business. It doesn't have to be fast. What got you where you are today, whether that's a beginner or you're killing it, this isn't what's going to get you to the next level. You're going to have to adapt grow, change, fail, start again. And it starts with what you're tired of in your business right now. What are you tired of? We talked about being tired, tired of all of the things outside of our control that we can't control, that we can still acknowledge we're tired of. But what are you tired of in your business? Because y'all, you can control that. Whatever that answer is for you, that is the thing that you need to consider changing right now. That's your not yet. What is that thing? What is something you're like, I'm so tired of X, Y, Z. For me, tired of handling Amazon returns and having customers send false returns that then I have to spend a day chasing down. It's a worthy work, but it's work I cannot stand. And I'm, it's getting more and more. It's getting worse. As inflation goes up and people's budgets are stretched, there's more fraud. There's more bad players. There's more cheaters and liars and stealers who will literally order your products off of Amazon, return something completely different, and keep your stuff. I've been dealing with this for months now. I'm tired of that. So what can I do? I can change that right now. I can hire someone to handle that part of the business. That's my not yet. What's yours? What are you saying? I can't, I won't, I'm not. Change it into yet, but I am willing to blank. Now, if you need help deciding what your next move is, I have finally opened my coaching calendar again to accept new clients. I would be happy to have a conversation with you about your goals and desires and what you want to be next, even if it's not Amazon. So many people are are scared to come to me and be like, well, I actually stopped doing Amazon a long time ago and I'm doing this and that. I'd love to hear about what you're doing now. If Amazon's not right for you, hallelujah, find something that is. Find something that is. But don't quit because it's hard. Don't quit because it's challenging because guess what? The grass is not greener in another business. You will have to learn new things, adapt, change, make mistakes, do all those things in any business that you do. So it's not really about the what that you're doing. It's how you're thinking about it, how you approach challenges, how you approach problems, how you choose to think and feel about challenges. You're going to always have problems. You're always going to have issues. There's nothing new under the sun. There's no straight line to success. There's no straight line or elevator up to the top of whatever mountain you're climbing. So whether that's an Amazon business or something else, you still 
apply the same principles. You're not there yet, but you're willing to do cha make changes to get where you want to be or get closer to where you want to be. I would love to help you figure that out, whether it's the next steps in your Amazon business or transitioning into something completely different. I've helped people with all those things. And I would love to just have a conversation to get to know you, to talk to you about what your desires and goals are so that you can take the next step. Visit mommyincome.com forward slash coaching to book an appointment. I finally opened my calendar. It's been closed for many months with lots of hard work in summer. And so now I would love to help you figure out what your next steps are. Mommyincome.com forward slash coaching. You can book an appointment. I'd love to chat with you. I want you to know that wherever you're at now, you can go forward. You're not there yet, but neither am I. So we're in the same boat. So let's pick up an oar and start moving in the right direction together. I know y'all could be anywhere else doing any other thing right now. I don't take that for granted. Thank you so much for listening to the Amazon Files podcast. Please subscribe and leave us a review and we'll see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.